Today we're in Richmond, Virginia to talk about one of the most infamous Civil War prisons, Libby Prison, today on Walk With History. I'm Jen of Walk With History, veteran, historian, museum professional, here with my husband Scott, active duty military, producer of the show, and we are the creators of Walk With History. <laughs> Near this site is where Libby Prison was located. We're on the James River waterfront, and this was Tobacco Row, and you can still see some old look, warehouse looking buildings. They've been turned into lofts now, but Tobacco Row, you can imagine, enslavement, plantations, tobacco coming here, holding the tobacco, getting it on the James River here in Richmond, and then disseminating it out to where it's been traded to. So Tobacco Row, we're on Cary Street. So Cary Street, 20th Street, 21st Street, 22nd Street. This was all Libby Prison. It was a tobacco warehouse that had been turned into like a ship's store warehouse in 1861, owned by a man named Libby and became Libby Prison. So one of the most infamous prisons of the Civil War. And we'll talk from 1845 to 1889. Luther Libby was northern born. He operated a grocery ship store from this warehouse. And when the Civil War uh, began, the onset and needed a place to house prisoners, the Confederate government evicted him and used the building for Union officers. I would imagine it was a three-story prison probably looked like this is the Virginia Holocaust Museum. The building probably looked a lot like this at the time since it was a warehouse. Uh, it was meant to hold officers. And what was significant about, about it being in Richmond, Virginia is most of the time they would parade the officers through the town to show victory, to show that they won a, a, a battle. And so parade the officers through the town of Richmond and then bring them here and hold them here. This prison, warehouse was not very big. So most of the time, people would then disseminate it to different prisons, most notoriously Andersonville in Georgia. But at, at some instances, you could get up to a thousand men, if not more, in these this prison. And the sanitation was horrendous. The conditions were terrible open barred windows so they were exposed to the elements at all times and so people would get very sick malnourished not given enough food and then they would die so it was behind andersonville this was the most deadly prison in the civil war There was escape attempts. There was one successful escape attempt from here on February 9th, 1864. 105 Union soldiers were able to make it through a tunnel here, and only about 48 were recaptured, so that was a successful jail. Break. And Libby Prison stood here until 1889, when it was dismantled, bought by a financer, of course, and moved to Chicago, where it was reassembled for visitors, for people to come and see. It failed there, it failed to be a money maker. So it was about a decade later in almost the turn of the century, it was disassembled again and then sold off as souvenirs. So this is the location of Libby Prison, but there is no structure of Libby Prison that exists today. Like I told you, we are on the James River here, Tobacco Row in Richmond, Virginia. So you can see, how useful this river would be for commerce at the time and bringing into trading goods. This is why the location of the warehouses was so important here. 
and also probably for bringing in prisoners and for dispersing prisoners back into the South as well. You will remember Libby Prison from those miniseries North and the South. It was a young America on the brink of oblivion. John Jake's epic story of love and war, North and South, starting Sunday, November 3rd. So in the North and the South, you remember Patrick Swayze's character, who's from the South, and he's best friends with the, uh, the other guy from the North, and they both go to West Point together, and they become best friends, and then 20 years later, when the war happens, they both are on their respective sides, and they're both successful men on their respective sides, and the Union officer is captured and sent to Libby Prison, and Patrick Swayze's character comes and liberates him from... Libby prison. So it is also used in media today because of its notoriety and only second to probably Andersonville. Many prisoners wrote about being in Libby prison. That's why there's a lot of primary source material about Libby prison. Uh, a Pennsylvanian, Clarence Wilson, remembered lying down at night, dovetailed together like sardines in a box on the bare floor without anything to cover us. I came out weighing about 90 pounds. Hope was all that sustained many. So it's much like Andersonville Prison. So behind me is Tobacco Row, and you can see its significance right here along the James River. So of course it's gonna be a great place to load goods on and off, load people on and off, and have a way to trade through the waterways here in Richmond, Virginia. Across from the location on 20th Street and Cary Street is this recreation of the building. So you can see, it looks a lot like that Holocaust Museum building now, a tobacco warehouse with the three stories here. And there's a good map as well. This talks about the Great Escape. I had told you where the Union officers found some tunnels and were able to make it out of the prison. It's one of the most notorious prisons of the Civil War, housed mostly Union officers. The doorway and the floor wall at 20th Street and the wall runs on the site of the building. So this is kind of the site of the building where this cement wall is. Appalling conditions, overcrowding, lack of sanitation, rampant disease. And that was chronicled by various inmates. Like I told you, many people talked about their experience at Libby Prison or wrote about their experience at Libby Prison. It's estimated that 40 to 50,000 prisoners came through Libby Prison. So if you think 40 to 50,000, when the building could really hold about a thousand at a time. So at times there were definitely more than a thousand crammed in there. But like I said, it was more of a holding prison. People would come here and then they would be disseminated into the South, most notoriously Andersonville. But this is a neat little kiosk across from the area and gives you a really great vantage point of the James River. After the siege of Richmond, when Abraham Lincoln visits Richmond, Virginia, and he goes to the Jefferson Davis home, the White House of the Confederacy, he actually walks by here, Libby Prison, and someone says to him, sir, we can't wait to tear it down. And Lincoln says, no, let's keep it up as a memorial. And I think that starts the significance of remembering this war, this significant war of our country, where it's brother against brother, friend against friend, and neighbor against neighbor, and not wanting to forget it or erase it. Unfortunately, all you can visit here now is the location. And like, like I said, the Holocaust Museum is here. And you do see some remnants of these old warehouses that were along Tobacco Road, Tobacco Row here in Richmond, Virginia. But unfortunately, Libby Prison doesn't exist but the location is still here for you to come and visit, and I hope you do.
I hope you enjoyed this walk with history today. I hope you learned something about humanity and overcoming. And if you ever get a chance to visit Richmond, Virginia, I definitely recommend making it down here to Tobacco Row and uh, paying your respects to the men who, who made it out alive and to the men who didn't. And on to my next walk with history.